Welcome to the Flame and Fiber Podcast. Do oh, I look terrible? My name is Barbara. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Diva S. The this is a knitting and sometimes spinning and very, very occasionally lamp working podcast. And today is a lamp working podcast. There's no knitting in this. This is a little bit of an extra video because people have been asking about lamp working and I haven't had it on my podcast forever. Even Dennis mentioned it. And I'm getting the urge, I've been getting the urge to get back to my um, torch. And it's 50 degrees outside today. It was 10 four days ago, Fahrenheit. And so it's a beautiful day to work in my studio. So I am going to give you a little tour of my studio. And then I'm going to show you how I do lamp working. So that's what this is about. And there is no knitting. But I just put up a knitting podcast a couple of days ago, so... There's lots of knitting in that one. So this is my studio. My husband, Dennis, and his father built me this studio. I should have started from the outside. Hold on. My studio is in a shed, a big shed. I'll get the dimensions from Dennis. And the when you walk in the big doors, this is what you see. This is Dennis's side, and he does woodworking here, and it's a mess. He hasn't been out here for a while, but... This is an unheated, unair conditioned space. So <laughs> you can go from there. My half of the space is behind this clear shower curtain. Now the shower curtain, is, two shower curtains, um, solve two problems. One is they help keep the woodworking dust out of my space. And in the winter, they do help keep the heat into my space because it can get very chilly. All right. So when I retired four years ago, Dennis and his dad built me this amazingly gorgeous lamp working studio. Lamp working is melting and shaping glass on a torch. Before there were modern torches, People use lamps, and that's why it's called lamp working. So he made me these gorgeous shelves with glass doors, and the glass doors, and behind the glass doors are these pipes. Um, you know what kind of pipes these are, which the word is escaping me. And in these pipes, I have my glass, sorted by color. And the glass doors allow me to look at my stash of glass, which you can understand, I'm quite sure, and also help keep out the dust and sawdust and things from what Dennis works on his half. So this is my shelving, but look how beautiful. I mean, they just did such a gorgeous job. They built these with this beveling and I've got drawers and cupboards that close and open shelving, which Dennis is using for his stuff, which is fine because I don't need it. I don't need that space. And then it won't surprise you that my workspace is messy because it's my workspace. But you can see that it is ceramic tile because, of course, I'm working with hot glass that will burn. This cardboard box is probably not the safest thing to have nearby, but <clears throat> the only reason I have it is because this is where my um, tripod for my can my phone is going to go to for you to watch me do my thing. Now, I also have shelves over here, which have some lamp working stuff and some, well, I guess most of it's my stuff. Some of it's Dennis's stuff. So what I have for equipment is, my of course main piece of equipment is my torch. This is a Mega Miner torch from the Nortel company, Nortel Machinery, made in Toronto, Canada. And it is a dual fuel torch. So you see I have two hoses going in and two nozzles. The green hose with the silver nozzle uh, turner is knob whatever you want to call it is the oxygen and this is the propane now you can see under my desk i have a propane tank it's just a barbecue style propane tank 
set up with a regulator. And under this side of the desk, I have an oxygen concentrator, which is a, a, a medical device that's been rejiggered. And I'm not sure that they did much to it to produce oxygen for my torch. And you can see the green cord goes over to it. So I will, you will see this in action for sure. But this is a lovely um, torch. It's not a high-powered torch. I The glass that I use, and you can see some of it out here, the glass that I use is uh, 103COE. COE is the coefficient of expansion, and that's how glass is classified, it's important that all the glass you use in one piece have the same coefficients, coefficient of expansion or your piece will crack. So all the glass I have in this studio is 103. There's 98, which is a little bit harder, and um, borosilicate is, I think it's like a 30, and it takes a, it's much harder, it's like Pyrex, and it takes a much bigger torch than I have. And I don't think you can do borosilicate using an oxygen concentrator. I think you have to have um, canned oxygen. You have to have big, you know, gas cylinders of oxygen, which can be very dangerous. So, and I don't have, and the things, the things that are made um, with borosilicate, for the most part, are things like goblets and figurines, statues, art pieces, pipes, things like that, which I don't make. I make beads. These are my mandrels. Now, four years ago, I started doing some serious lamp working, and I was selling my beads on... Facebook groups, um, auction style, and it was a lot of work, way too much work, and I burned myself out, which is why I haven't been doing very much lamp working. I was making things to sell. I mean, it's a real, uh, you people out there who, who dye yarn and sell it, I mean, it's such a rush that somebody wants to buy something that you've made to make, you know, to do something in there in their art. And so when a jewelry maker buys your bead, it is such a rush. I cannot tell you. But I wasn't making any money and I was working really hard. <laughs> and I got burned out. So these mandrels, so make the bead, this is how the hole ends up on your bead. You make the, make the bead on the end of this mandrel. And then the bead release is a little bit of ceramic slip kind of that allows the bead to come off the mandrel when you are done. I do not know if I'm going to be able to make any beads because my bead release is all frozen and icky and dried and I might have to buy more. You can see, see these little spots on this mandrel? I can't use this mandrel because those little spots, the glass will stick to the mandrel and the bead will not come off. So I'm going to try to find some of these. These mandrels were prepared three years ago, so it's very likely that anything I make on them will not come off. But I am going to be making some beads on some of them if, that don't look like this This one. This one is going into the water right away. But these are the mandrels that you make the beads on. <laughs> some, of them are, some of them are shapes. It's very hard to get a triangle off, let me tell you. So I'm not very good at the triangles. Here is a button mandrel. This is designed to make a glass button with two holes in it. Isn't that cool? They're not that easy to get off either, <laughs> tell you the truth. I think you have to have a very loose bead release. Here's a large hole bead mandrel. This is for like a Pandora. Um, this is a big thick one. I wonder, I guess I don't know. I don't have a Pandora. This might be for a Pandora actually. How big is the hole in a Pandora bead? I don't know. Anyway. So the other equipment I have in here, this is my exhaust fan. The glass gives off uh, fumes when it's burned and it's very important that you not 
breathe those fumes. So this is a high powered industrial exhaust fan. And anytime I'm doing beading, this is on, which is why it's noisy in the, in the studio, which is why I have a mirror <laughs> so I can hear, see people coming up behind me. <laughs> um, and you all, I always have to have the door open or a window open so that the fresh air, new air can come in from behind me because I want the new air to come behind me, the air to flow from my back to my front and and take, oh, can you see, and take the air up into the exhaust fan so I'm not breathing the fumes from in front of me. They're going straight up there and not, not to me. The other piece of equipment I have here is my kiln. Um, beads need to be annealed for them to be strong enough to be put, used in jewelry making. So I, so, and this is a, is a kiln. This is a bead kiln. Um, and oh, hive glass hive made this one it's a lovely and it's got a little it's got a little door so that the mandrels can stick out the door um if they're fatter if you can see you can see that there's already a slot here that mandrels can stick out of but sometimes you need more space so i have a bead door there sometimes you're just putting things in there um, when I'm, I've been making stitch markers for the most part the last couple years and they can go all the way in. They don't have a long mandrel sticking out. So other than that, I have different hand tools that I can make things out of. This is my flower mold that I've been making my flower stitch markers using. And so this is it. I ha I brought in a bucket of water and I will be filling my, this is where my, my bad pig, my bad things go to die. This is filled with water. And so anything that's not working and it has to be thrown away, gets thrown into there. So you can see that was the rubble from the last couple times I was making things. And I also put water in here and use it to take this bead is broken. I don't know if I even tried to get those off or not. It's been a while, let me tell you. So, and everything is dusty. Everything is dusty. These are my, um, some fancy glass. And I have lots of tools. I can nip glass. I can shape glass. I have in my drawers, I have all kinds of graphite tools to mold things. So you can use tools against the glass, but if you're using bronze tools or brass tools, they have to be cold. Glass won't stick to cold metal. And if if um, they get hot, you have to, oops, sorry, you have to cool them off. But these are ways to shape beads and um, Maybe I'll be using some of these and I'll show you how they work. This is a press. So you want to bead that shape. You put you put your mandrel. You can, can you see the, the groove? The mandrel goes in the groove. And the lid matches. And you end up making a shaped bead. So I have lots of those things. I was acquiring my tools when I was working and feeling flush. <laughs> so I have lots of tools and as you can see I have lots and lots of glass I'm having a yarn no by year this is not my first no by year I have my last year where I was really working a lot in my lamp ring I had a glass no by year and you can see why which is why I'm, I'm very familiar with the idea of a of a a Supply, no buy year. And so I will be working with my yarn that I have this year. And I haven't bought glass in years. And I don't foresee myself buying glass. Although I am very likely to be buying new bead release. Because I have been inspired to get back and do some lamp working. And I want to make some beads just to make beads. All right. 
I've done a lot of talking and now it's time to get started. So the first thing that goes on is the the kiln. It is 40 degrees in here or the kiln is now 40 degrees and that's in part because it takes longer for everything in here is colder than the air outside. The air outside is around 50. So this is going to go up to 925 degrees and I can't um, put any beads in it until it gets pretty close to 925. So it'll be a few minutes before I can start so I can get myself organized, think about what I want to do. I think I'm going to start by making head pins, which are what lamp workers call the things I make my stitch markers out of because I I'm putting I put glass I put glass I put my hot glass right on the end of can you see that <laughs> of my wire and then I loop the wire around a closed jump ring and turn it into a stitch marker or in, into a um, lobster claw or whatever I'm going if I'm turning it into a progress keeper so that is what I will start making and then I am going to find a couple of these mandrels and see if I think that and try to make some beads I haven't made beads in a very long time years really so I'm going to try to make some beads and hope that they will come off the mandrel tomorrow so I'm going to start today and show you how I make the things and then I will be coming back tomorrow to see what's in my kiln and hopefully some of the bee release in the kitchen has thawed and is usable so that I can make beads tomorrow too because it's supposed to be in the 50s tomorrow. So I do have a little heater. No, oh, no, I don't. Where's my little heater? Dennis, Dennis must have taken my little heater. Well, I don't need it because I'm not cold. The, between the torch, between the torch and the kiln, this place will warm up. I will close, I will close my curtain so that any heat I do um, produce will stay pretty much in this area because it's cool enough. I am wearing cotton. I'm wearing a cotton sweatshirt with cotton um, um, sweatpants and a t-shirt. I always wear cotton when I'm in here. Uh, this glass, when I it hits the torch, some of it is going to shatter and spray out. So it's you can't wear flammable clothing. Wool would be great, but I'm not wearing my wool. <laughs> Just in case. You can see the temperature is going up nicely. So I am going to turn on the oxygen concentrator, which is noisy, turn on my fan, which is noisy, and start getting organized here. And I'll show you while I, my making of my stitch markers at least, and maybe some beads. All right, I've tried to figure out a way to put my extra pair of protective glasses over the lens, and I have not managed out how to do that in a way that will actually work which is too bad I will put a, I will hold them there for a second so you can see why I need them but I'm wearing mine and these are similar to what a welder's mask would have because I am trying and protecting my eyes from the sodium flare of I think it's sodium flare. Anyway, from the yellow flare of my torch. And unfortunately, which and because it blocks out the yellow flare from the torch, I can see what I'm doing. But because I am not able to put my um, other glasses on the camera, for the most part, it will be harder for you to see what I'm doing. All right, I'm ready to turn on my torch. Uh, I have the oxygen open because the oxygen concentrator has been running and I was 
letting it warm up and get up to speed. The um, kiln is at 800 degrees, so it won't take long, and I can put things in now. It would probably be fine. To start the torch, however, you need to be on propane only. So I have to turn off the I have to turn off the oxygen that's been coming out. Start my flame and turn on my propane. There you have it, folks. And then I turn on my oxygen, and now I have my lamp working flame. And I adjust it by adjusting the amount of oxygen and the amount of propane till I, you know, guess correctly that I have um, a good, a good flame. I am going to start with progress keepers. So I put the copper, I don't know if you can see the copper, I have my glasses on so I can't tell, the copper wire in the roach clip. So I'm holding it like this. Typically I would be just putting the glass in, I would be holding the cold end of the glass and putting the warm end, glass is not a good conductor of heat. And so I can hold the end of the rod without worrying about it until it gets very small. And then I have a tool I have a tool that's also like a roach clip and much used to hold the smaller ends so that I can use as much glass as possible. So as I said, so I have put some, um, I have put some glass rods on top of the kiln because the outside of the kiln is actually warm. So I'm going to do a blue flower. Now, as I said, the um, hot glass will not attach itself to cold metal. So if I want the glass to stick to this, I have to put it in the fire and I will show you that. So I have, can you, you can, oh, oh, first, first let me demonstrate why I have the glasses. So you can, you see that yellow flame and you can't really see what's going on. I'm actually heating up this glass pretty well. But if I put this, I put this over and I put the glass in. Now you can see the glass in the flame. Now, if you were looking, same thing, but it's yellow with my, with my protection, eye protection. Now you can see what's going on. So it's too bad I can't figure out how to get this to stay on. <laughs> And maybe I'll work on that for my next lamp working video because it would be nice. But anyway, I have warm, I have hot glass here, although, um, but I have not heated up the, the copper. So when I put this on the copper, it is not sticking. It is not sticking. But when I heat up the copper, as you will see in a second, if I give myself some elbow room here. Oh dear, I'm getting ahead of myself. I did not put my water from my bucket into my cup, my safety cup. It now has water in it, so if I need to throw something away, it goes in there. If I need to cool something off, it goes in there. But as you can imagine, if something's really hot, it cools, it heats the water up pretty quickly. I'm also filling the other. It's actually a bread pan. <laughs> well, there, and that will be my auxiliary. And plus, I have the bucket too, so you've got to have water around. All right, so now I'm reheating this because it got cool. And I'm also heating up the wire. Now I don't have the torch on very high. I don't know if you can see, but the wire's getting red too. So the wire's hot, the torch is hot, and now the glass is flowing onto the wire and it is sticking. I'm going to make a flower, which doesn't take very much glass. And since I haven't done this in a while, I'm sure I'm going to mess up the first one, but you know, that's how it is. 
And unfortunately, unlike knitting, you do not recover your materials. <laughs> you don't recover your materials. If you screw something up, you screwed it up. So here's my mold for the flowers. I'm trying to get this into more of like a ball. And the main tools you use to shape your glass are gravity and heat. Those are the two, but I'm putting it in here. And voila, I have a flower. Now I can't keep that flower out in the cold air very long or it will break. So my, tour, my, my um, kiln is at 913 degrees, which is plenty hot. And let me see if I can turn this so you can watch what I'm doing see the kiln and so I'm going to oh maybe I should just leave it like that so I'm keeping it hot I've got a big giant tweezers because I'm going to release the roach clip take my thing and throw it in my kiln and voila I have a stitch marker So one of the things that happens to me is, oh, this is the one I wanted, <laughs> is I put things down in a hurry because you got to do things in a hurry when you're working with glass and then I can't find where I'm putting it because my space is so messy. Alright, so I think you can see, kind of see everything there. Alright, so then you'll be able to see me put things in the... So that was a blue flower. I got the blue warm already, so I'll make a couple blue flowers. And then I will make um, I have some pink warming up too. Pink is what I use to make the pigs. In fact, um, there's a famous in the lamp working world woman who makes all kinds of pigs. And um, her name is Jelly. G-E-L-L-Y. And I think the color of pink that I have is called Jelly's Pink. So it's for, it was developed to make pigs. Now the color pink in glass, all the colors in glass come from minerals. And um, pink comes from gold. And so pink glass is more expensive usually than other colors because it uses gold to create the pink color. And there I have another flower. These are not great flowers. I'm not getting the, um, the amount exactly right. And I don't know, I'm not heating heating the glass evenly or something so they're get they're not an even color. I think they're fine, they'll be cute stitch markers, but you know, they're the first ones I'm making today. So then I open it, open my thing, and put it in. So those are the how I make the flower stitch markers. Eventually my mold will get warm and I will have to dip it in my water will warm my water up and then I'm shaking it to get the water off of it. Because if you put the glass in it with the water in it, sometimes it breaks your it breaks your beads. So you need to be careful. Okay. So this is how lamp working works. You melt the glass, you put it on um, something. Now a mandrel This one looks okay. So you heat up the mandrel and then you put the glass on it. And when you take it off, you then have a hole in the middle of your bead after you clean out the, the um, bead release from your hole and you have a lovely bead to make a project with. But I do not have in my mind what I want to do with the bead. 
I'm not sure what the hell I'm gonna make. Why don't I pick a new color so you get to see a new color? This is one of my favorite colors. It's called petroleum. It is also a blue, but it's a blue green. It's more like a teal. And so I, you gotta heat up the mandrel and I'm gonna watch this mandrel very closely because if any of this bead release pops off, then I'm not going to, well, that would mean that I ruined the mandrel because I won't be able to get the glass off of it. And of course the bead would be useless too. But this is how you make a bead. You warm up your mandrel, you warm up your glass, and then you just roll it on. Now I'm gonna make a classic donut shaped bead. And I'm gonna have to make a pretty big bead because the glass has spread on the mandrel. I don't know if you can tell. So that um, you don't want you want, it's important that the whole of the bead be um, a little smaller than the, than the bead itself. So it's got a little dimple where the, where the hole is. So because my glass spread, if I want this to be a good looking bead, which on some level, it's just to show you. Um, just turned it up it wasn't quite hot it just felt like it wasn't hot enough so it's also important that you keep your bead on your mandrel warm at all times or it will break right here on top of the mandrel so I'm gonna just put a little more glass on here and then I'll show you how it is shaped by gravity the other kinds of glass I have in the studio or I have what is called frit, which is tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces of glass that you can roll your bead in. This is mostly frit in here. You can roll your bead in um, as a way to decorate it, to add other colors. And often the frit is actually 90% COE. Uh, 96 COE rather than the 104. If you have a very small amount of it, it doesn't affect the integrity of your bead, so it's okay. But I guess you can get more intense colors in 96 COE for some reason. I'm not sure what the deal is, but anyway, so my torch is not hot enough. There we go. Alright, let's power this baby up. So because you can't you can't see very well because of the sodium flare, but this is heating up and you need to and I'm turning it, constantly turning it because its gravity and heat are gonna shape this into a donut. And that is the first thing that you learn as a lamp worker and that's what throws people off at the beginning because you end up with a bead like this see how it's thicker on one part than, a, than the other part and it throws people off. The other thing is you have to work really quickly because you've got gravity and heat and um, I do, I do, I am a little jealous of polymer bead makers because they can just sit there and work at whatever speed they want. They don't have to worry about um, time nearly as much, although I suppose their clay can dry out and things like that, but you know what I mean. I have minutes. I have minutes. Because this has to stay warm, and so I have to keep turning it. I was thinking about, well, I was planning on making this video this morning, and I was thinking about it, and I, and one of the, one of the things regarding my knitting and my lamp working is, I was lamp working already when I taught myself how to knit. I taught myself how to knit on, you, you know, watching YouTube videos. And I w wanted to 
have something that I could do while I was watching TV so I didn't feel like such a lump while I was watching TV and I, you know, and I thought knitting would be a good thing and, I, you know, and I had been to that yarn shop in North Carolina and wanted to own all the yarns, so it all came together. But I did notice after I started teaching myself to knit that knitting used exactly the same muscles as lamp working and I had had a long day. One day I had a long day in the studio and I was sitting down to knit and my arm, right arm, and my right shoulder were tired. Oh, this is a terrible bead. Um, and I realized I was using exactly the same muscles to knit. I was teaching myself to knit English style throw, throw. I didn't know about picking at the time or flicking. Um, and I was using exactly the same muscles and I thought, hmm, that may not be the best thing I've ever decided to do. So I um, switched and taught myself how to knit continental. And that is why I knit continental, is because I was lamp working and I didn't want to overburden my right arm, right shoulder muscles. All right, well, this is gonna, I don't think this is gonna get any better. And so here's my bead. And you can, I don't know if you can see the uh, dark lines and stuff. This is, I love this glass. It does all kinds of interesting things. And um, I don't know, there's something about that color that I really, really love. And now that I'm thinking about it, this glass will go gorgeous with the Kira sweater that I'm knitting myself. So maybe I'll just try to knit make myself some earrings. All right, so this is gonna, so here it is. Pull it off a little bit because you don't want it to bump anything and make a mess, but it's going in the kiln. And now you can see that my mandrel sticks out of the door of the kiln. And that, and it would stick out of the other side too. It's not being, um, you did, it doesn't need the door open. going to sit here and make some stitch markers and some beads and I will film as much of it as my phone will let me but I probably won't be talking so maybe I'll find some nice music and you won't have to listen to the well you'll still hear it I suppose unless I speed it up a little bit and then put music anyway I have been thinking about, I have some stamps that I can use and I was thinking about making new um, stitch markers that have the stamps on them. One thing that I made, I've made in the past were flowers and I love these little flowers but the last time I made, tried to make them that didn't work out very well so I might do this again. I have a little bouquet of these in my powder room. And I just love them. I made them because the windows to the studio have little window boxes on the outside and I wanted flowers but because they get zero sun there are no flowers that would really go in a window box so I made my own and that gave me the idea so let me try uh let me try I'm gonna stamp I'm gonna try to stamp and see how that looks because uh you know, if I want to give stitch markers to somebody who already has the leaves, I, the first ones I made were leaves, and the second one I've been making them flowers for a while. So let me see if I can make something fun with my stamp. So since I've been doing stitch markers, I've been working on a very small scale. Um, I might show you some put some pictures of some of my beads on uh, at the end of this. Because this is a very small scale. And mm, let's see. One of the problems with beads is if you make a lot of them, what do you do with them? <laughs> get out the pictures of my um, centerpiece of these. Is I have 
some vases, you know, the clear vases that you get from the florist. And somebody sends you flowers. And uh, I have several of those full of beads that I use as a centerpiece. Oh, that turned out cute. If I could actually center my thing, it would be better. <laughs> Something a little different. These kinds of things are really just showing off the glass. I do have some amazing glasses. They're, they're, they, um, there's a whole series of glass called silver glass that react and make all kinds of gorgeous, gorgeous reactions to changes in the level of um, propane or oxygen in your flame. They are very expensive. Not that it matters. I've got lots because I just, you know, how it is. I have beautiful things and I want to buy more and I have lots and then I stop doing it. So I'm a little terrified of the day when I decided that I don't want to be a lamp worker anymore. And I don't know what am I going to do with all this stuff. Put it on Craigslist for some new lamp worker to get a bonanza, I guess. But it's, uh, meanwhile, I am feeling like working again in my studio, which is making me very happy. There. Now, when I press like that to flatten it, so I've just flattened this, you can, I don't know if you can see the little rings on that. Those are chill marks because was cold. It's cooled down the glass considerably and they're called chill marks. Now some people find a way to incorporate chill marks in their design, but chill marks are considered, in general, they're not, you're not supposed to leave them in. But you know, it's a little bit like rules in knitting. It's your, you know, do your own thing is what I say. So I'm having a bullseye, oops, nope. I was going to say, I'm having a bullseye of chill marks, and then I'm going to put my design, but it was too, it wasn't soft enough to take the design, so that's interesting. There we go. I am having trouble getting this centered. I, and I'm not sure, oh yeah, that worked. I was going to say, I'm not sure how well it's going to work to do on both sides, but it seems like it is, and it's certainly you want Stitch marker like that it would be better if you, you know, it works either way. Alright. So I'm going to keep chugging along here and I am actually going to stop talking. You can just watch me what I'm doing. Pity glass all over me. 
doesn't matter. The danger in lamp working is um, burns rather than cuts. I mean, I have, you know, had small cuts, but I have had some larger issues with burns. Burns are the danger. Which won't come as a shock to you if you, as you see the uh, torch and the very, very, very hot glass. So. press I have, I have a little, what I call my chop, which, my name is Barbara Colon, pronounced just like punctuation mark, so I have a small b and a punctuation colon as my chop. When I ordered that from the people who make those, this was a long time ago, she was like, oh, you know, that's just going to look like a mistake. Nobody's going to be able to read it. And I said, well, what I want is in the 2075 Antiques Roadshow, I want some guy to be able to say, oh, and this beat? This beat was made by Barbara Colin in the beginning of the 21st century. <laughs> because it's very hard to sign a beat. And, uh, you know, so I, oops, shoot. So I wanted to be able to sign my deeds. I just touched that pot, I put it down next to one that was also hot. And now I have a string of glass I have to deal with when I'm done here. So I do have a chalk, which I very rarely remember to use. And I certainly haven't used it on um, my... stitch markers because they aren't big enough. But I'm going to make a, put my chop on this one and see what I think about that. And I have to get it right. I'm going to get the chill mark off of this. My signature chop. true that you can't recover your materials, but you can only recover them to some degree while you're still working the bead. <laughs> so I didn't like that second one. So I'm going to start over. So I'm starting over. So I re-melted it. And I didn't squeeze it quite so, quite so much.
Yeah, I will work on that. See what I can do with my chalk. Because that would be fun. Like, I wasn't, like, ambitious or anything. Yeah, the antique road show. Oh, yeah, she was a bead maker from the beginning of the 21st century. <laughs> so I've been working on making, trying to make a nice pig. I haven't lost my problem is that when you put things down, mm -hmm. I have trouble finding them again. So I'm using Jelly's, actually I think it's called Jelly Sty. It's the color of glass, which is pig color. And I will show you how I make a pig. I may have done this on a video before. If so, I apologize. Um, but the pigs turn out really cute, and I have been thinking my main problem seems to be getting the eyes where I want them. And I finally, it occurred to me that I should just mark where I want them before I get my eye glass in my hand. And uh, I just did one and it worked. So I'm going to try again. Now this one's going to be a small one. Small ones are not necessarily easier, but you know, for a stitch marker or a progress keeper, you don't want them too big. I'm trying to get a nice shape there. So there's the pig face, pig head. My mandrel's kind of showing through the back of that one, so I'm going to put the face on the other side. First thing is the nose. Whatever, and you just put a blob of glass like that. And this is a graphite marver, it's called. You can put your glass on there and shape it. I have other ones in my drawer I showed you. The graphite works great with glass. This nose is a little off center. You know, not everyone is perfect. And now I'm going to put the nostrils in. I have this little tweezers. Tweezer ends. That puts the nostrils. And next, does, next is the eyes. And next are the eyes. And so I want to mark where I want to put them because that has been... my trouble in the past not getting the eyes in a good spot. Now I have a stringer which is very skinny and I can, there you go. And this is black and I am going to use this for the eyes. So this is going to have black eyes and I'm going to put it right there. Oops. Came out. The two glasses have to be other problem I have with the eyes. And they end up too big. So put them both the same size. Maybe that'll be fine. We'll see. We'll see what you think about this guy. So. Alright. And last is the ears. The ears are the hardest because I, half the time I end up making things that look like pink kittens with pudgy, pudgy noses. Because you want the ears to be pointy. No. They need to stay on. They can be flopped over. Because pig's ears are flopped over. I don't know how familiar you are with pigs. Their ears are flopped over. Messing it up. All right. So the other way to pull on glass is this is warm but not hot anymore. And if I get the ear hot, it'll stick a little bit but not too bad, but it will pull it out. Ah, there you go.
whole pig face warm now. Wow. This guy did not turn out great, but he's not terrible. He's kind of cute. And he will work. So there it is. Oops. See? Warming it up too much. Now he looks like a cat again. Although well, cats have pointy ears. I don't know why that. I think he. Oh, you know what? He looks like a panda bear or something. Pink panda bear with a piggy nose. There's no propane left in the line, and so there you go. And now I'm, turn I'm closing the propane line because, as you do, turning off my oxygen concentrator. I'm turning off my fan now so it's not quite so noisy, and I will show you how I launch my kiln. So I didn't do... I'm going to switch sides here. So I did not make tons of stuff. You can kind of see in there. I made some though and so I need to launch my kiln so that it will program up maybe down nope up <laughs> nope 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 Run. Okay. I don't do this often enough. I forgot. All right. So now it will go back up to 9.35, I think, and it'll hold there for about a half an hour. Then it will lower the temperature by about 50 degrees and hold there for half an hour. The whole thing takes about eight hours for it to get down to temperature. I think it gets down to around six, five or 600 degrees, and then it actually shuts off and it just slowly goes to room temperature. Um, it's very well insulated. It takes a while to go to room temperature. So in the end it's done in about um, eight hours. Before I go to bed, oh it's going down. Funny. Oh now it's going to go back up. Um, Before I go to bed, I come and I flip the switch because it's got, it's on and off switch is mechanical. It's not electronic. So if the power goes out, even for a blip of power, what happens is because it's flipped on mechanically, it goes on and it goes up to temperature to 935 or whatever it is set at. So, um... And we occasionally have power blips in the middle of the night. So I turn, as soon as it's finished regulating the heat and it's then ready to go down to um, room temperature, I turn it off so that if the power blips, anyway, I don't know if that makes any sense. Because it's mechanical and not electrical, it will stay on. If it were electrical, I think it would just go off, which would be fine. But I don't want it running at, you know, and I guess it holds at 9.15. I didn't even remember. I set it the way the manufacturer says, and that's what I use. So it holds around 9.15 for about a half an hour and then goes down. So anyway, this is my, uh, this is my day lamp working. Okay. Day. It's the next day. It's about noon now because I just took Pearl for a walk. It is in the high 50s. It's way colder in here than it is outside. I still have the door open. 
but I wanted to oops, show you my beads. Wow, my one bead <laughs> and my I'll put a towel so we can see them. And I will bring them out of the kiln. So here's the Here's the actual one bead that I made. I'm gonna put this in the water and let it soak and we'll see, but see how the coloring, um, we ended up with that stripe in the middle. That's just, you know, one of the effects of the glass. So these glasses are so amazing, some of them. They do all kinds of cool stuff. So that's a, ended up being a pretty bead. It's not a bad bead in, in the end. I thought it was not gonna be a great bead, but I'm gonna soak it see if I can get it off the mandrel. And here are the stitch markers I made, some of which you watched and some of which were after I stopped recording. And you can see that the um, wires have black on them. That's fire scale. And that comes off I use um, steel wool to get that off now this one um, I used my stamp and I tried to put some enamel in the grooves it worked pretty well for one I don't know I don't know if that's gonna be too blurry there we go, for one of them. I'll take picture. The flowers turned out fine, but you can see what I'm talking about, about the color is not, one side is fatter than the other, and I think that, I get that a lot. I think it has to do with the, maybe putting in too much glass, and maybe it is um, just the mold is not. I mean, it was a cheap mold, so. It could just be not um, even. And here is another attempt to put some color inside the, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. I, this could be just the glass is, um, is doing it. So is that, they, always, they all have one side that's better than the other, and that's because, you know, I press one. And then I heat up the other side and press the other side, but then the first side is flat is flattened a little bit. So here's my pig, one of my pigs. No, oh, he's cracked, so he's not gonna go anywhere. This is this pig is for me. I don't know if you can see the crack, but there's a crack right between his eyes. I had him out of the out of the heat too long. So the main body cracked. So that one's for me. That's too bad. You can see, I, I don't know if you can see the chill mark on the back of that. His eyes are a little wa wacky, but not terrible. You know, nobody's symmetrical. <laughs> and he's not cracked, so who knows? Somebody might end up with that one. But I did some I used a different kind of glass for this, so it's got color and it's see-through, and I put the design on. It's kind of interesting. I have another um, press, which is a spiral that I used on this. That's a little bit big, but it's not so heavy. Um, so I think it might work. So anyway, this is the end product of the day. Let me see if I can find any of the ones I tried to do with my chop. This one didn't, didn't work out so well. So I'll take a picture of these and post it. The red, I love the red, but it's a little see-through so you can see the the copper wire, this thing I was trying to do there, did not work. Oh, yuck. But there's another one I tried to do my chop on, but it's clear, so 
that's hard to see. So not much happened yesterday, uh, but that one worked pretty well. I mean, you can't see it very well because it's just in the glass, but oh well. So this is what the next day looks like. Normally I would have more, but I had a somewhat shorter session yesterday, but I have a few stitch markers here that I can make. And um, I will be back in the studio another day. But this is what I do when I'm lamp working. So. so I just came back from a walk. I don't know if I even look good enough to have my face on this video. But, and you can see I'm wearing my torn up. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to be um, doing any more lamp working today. And I'm. Still not sure, but I'm not going to be doing it now. I have people coming tomorrow, so I have to straighten up. And I think I'm going to watch a video about how to do brioche so I can work on my exploration station. And uh, I have other knitting to do. So, but I'm going to take these in the house and take some pictures of them. And I will see you in a couple weeks with a knitting podcast. I hope you have lots of time to do the crafting that brings you joy. Goodbye.